Mullinger's Weekly Ramble. Hello, my friends. It is Wednesday the 13th of March, which means it's time for Mullinger's Weekly Ramble. That's right. It's episode two. Um, I can't thank you all enough for listening last week. I was absolutely flummoxed and blown away and floored by the response to it. I believe we had something like 400 downloads in the first 24 hours, which is just incredible for a brand new podcast by a basically unknown comedian. Um, So yeah, I'm really excited to be back. I've been legitimately really looking forward to this chatting with all of you. Um, It's hump day. I hope to cheer you up. Uh, It's early. Um, What's been going on? Well, uh, I'm a year older since I saw you last. Saw you last. Spoken was in the lot since the last time I was in your ears. I um have turned forty six because yes, it was my birthday on Monday. Um, birthdays in your forties do get slightly more. I don't know if emotional's the word, but they, you definitely are. There's a lot of food for thought. There's a lot of reminiscing. There's a lot of looking back. Thankfully, this was kind of the perfect birthday. There's nothing worse, I think, than trying to organise. A big party and then obviously things, you know, going mad and then you wake up feeling rotten. I I didn't want any of that. We just had a a really, really nice uh, day. Went to the YMCA for a swim with my son in the morning. Uh, Went to a beautiful Garden Grove Cafe for a Donair. At lunchtime, had a beer at lunchtime, which which was a treat. You know, it's not, not many Monday lunchtimes that one is drinking a beer in their 40s. So that was nice. Um... Chatted with my mum and dad, with my brother and my niece, Lily, who um, I'm delighted to say actually shares my birthday. She turned 18 on Monday, uh, the 11th of March. And uh, needless to say, it feels like absolutely yesterday that Pam and I came bowling out of a nightclub on the King's Road in Chelsea, uh, celebrating my birthday, only to get the call from uh, Kelowna, BC, that uh, my brother's uh, amazing wife, Jessie, had just given birth to a beautiful baby girl uh, called Lily. Well, it is then. Now she's 18. Um, and I think, you know, birthdays, especially momentous ones like that, when people are turning 18 or 40 or 50 or whatever, it, it is harder when your family is is all spread out. Um, you know, I've been here 10 years now. Um, I think I've been pretty clear on record that I don't regret moving here ever. And almost every day I feel, feel blessed to, to have, have made that decision to leave uh, a life in London behind and, and move to New Brunswick. But 10 years in, I, I, I can admit that there are, it, it's get, it gets tougher with uh, people. You know, my mum, for example, had a hip replacement a few weeks ago. Um, she needs help uh, around the house. My dad's obviously doing his best and doing a great job, I'm sure. But um, it's really hard to be here and not be there helping and not being there for them. Um, and similarly, you know, my, my brother, I mean, he also left England. Again, amazing thing. Just by coincidence, he also married a Canadian. I say coincidence, always bloody copies me. Always has since childhood. Anyway, he lives out in um, beautiful Okanagan Valley in Vernon, BC. Um, interesting story, very quickly, in brackets. I, I did a show a few years ago at uh, the Canadian... I don't know if I should tell this. Will I get in trouble for this? Well, I'll just say, I, I, I did a show at the Canadian Embassy uh, in a country that will, we won't mention which embassy. That way I can't get in trouble. And no one else. Anyway, I met like the head dignitary, like the head states person of the, of, the, uh, of the embassy, the Canadian Embassy in this country, which we will not reveal. And they said to me, and I kid you not, they said, so you live in New Brunswick? I said, yes. And they said, and your brother also? moved to Canada, I understand. And I said, yes, he he, he lives in, uh, in, in at the time it was Kelowna he was in. So he lives in Kelowna, BC. And the head of the Canadian embassy in this particular undisclosed country turned around and said, oh, that must be nice, having him closer. No, <laughs> he is twice as far away in the same country as he was when he still lived in England. Um, how does the head of the Canadian embassy in this undisclosed country not know that? Anyway, um, all of this is to say that we're all spread out. So uh, Zoom is is a godsend. So yeah, I, I, if you were wondering, I had a wonderful birthday. Um, we did all this. I went to watch my son play hockey. I uh, played Sussex last night. Lots of his teammates were away. Um, so it was a very, very difficult game. Both teams played uh, excellently. Uh, Sussex won and, uh, and everyone put in a wonderful performance, which let's face it, is what it's all about. 
Um, so yes, birthday, birthday, thank you. Um, so uh, the Oscars. Obviously, I talked a lot about the Oscars last week, um, but uh, now we saw them. I hope everyone enjoyed. I have to say, for me personally, I think it was one of the most enjoyable Oscar ceremonies in years. Um, in inherently watchable, entertaining, funny. I think Jimmy Kimmel, the fourth times, four times the charm. Um, he was legitimately funny i thought the jokes had the right balance of of edginess and cynicism with you know with the kind of required celebratory nature he had a, you know it was it was just really one of i sat i sat there and laughed is the point um and uh as i mentioned last week you know the oscars are a big thing for me it's it's, it's my super bowl i remember 30 years ago uh the morning after the oscars uh like walking to work i was working in wh smith's uh in maidenhead which is like a, a british indigo and I'd be listening to the Oscar results on my on my headphones. And again, it's like, you know, I was, you know, I was and am a huge Quentin Tarantino fan. Um, and so, you know, I was jumping for joy when, when Tarantino and Roger Avery won for uh, Best Screenplay for Pulp Fiction. I was, you know, again, I'm in 1990 being so angry that Goodfellas didn't win Best Picture. So, I mean, all of these things, it, it, it means a lot to me. So, um the results. Well, I, I posted my predictions online. Some of you saw them. Some of you commented on them. I predicted all of them. Uh, I correctly guessed 16 out of the 23 uh, winners, um, partly because I have to say, other than a couple of uh, uh, categories, it was the most predictable Oscars in years, which in some ways is quite boring. Uh, it's quite boring that, you know, we all knew Oppenheimer was going to clean up, and it did. You know, what's fun in these uh, ceremonies is the big surprises. Um, and there weren't any big surprises. The only big surprise was actually not a particularly pleasant one, which was um, Emma, um, Emma Stone winning Best Actress for Poor Things, which I don't think, I mean, there were signs that was going to happen. She won a couple of the other awards. But um, beating Lily Gladstone for Killers of the Flower Moon, I think most people wanted Lily Gladstone to win. She certainly deserved to win. Um it would have been a beautiful thing for her to win. Um, also, not to take anything away from Emma Stone and her remarkable performance, but Emma Stone already has an Oscar. Very young, uh, already has an Oscar, didn't need another one. Uh, so that was a, a surprise, but not a good one. I felt a bit gutted when that when that happened. Um, again, Martin Scorsese, how... Martin Scorsese, there's some incredible stat where he he is like has the record for like the most number of films that have had multiple nominations and won nothing um there's something like there's like five films like you know um killers of the flower moon uh, taxi driver blah, 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 a few others list them off and between them they've got like 35 oscar nominations zero wins uh so i don't know what it is uh about because he's um again most people love scorsese the other big surprise was a pleasant one which was Godzilla minus one winning best visual effects. That's right, a movie that cost fifteen million dollars beat um uh, four other movies, which all of which cost upwards of two hundred million. If that is not a, a victory for the little man, I don't know what is. What a beautiful thing, uh, as you know, I'm a huge fan of, of low budget filmmaking. Not that fifteen million is, is low budget, but I, I love the fact that they proved there and then, you know. I've been a huge, I'm, I'm a huge fan of stories like, you know, I remember when Clerks came out in, was it 93, 94, uh, 93. Um, Kevin Smith basically delivered the funniest film of the year that was shot for like, you know, made for like 50 grand. Uh, and it just kind of proved that what makes great movies is a heart and great writing. It's not about money. Um, and some of the most expensive films ever are, are some of the worst. So anyway... I'm a huge fan of The Underdog. I'm a huge fan of anyone that can produce something amazing. And especially visual effects is the number one thing that you would think would be the hardest thing to get right uh, on a limited budget. But they did it and they won the Oscar. Good on them. Uh, again, I, I by best costume design, I predicted Barbie. Poor Things got it. Uh, makeup and hairstyling, uh, I predicted Maestro. Uh, poor Things got it. Again, both well-deserved. Maestro, I should have realized makeup, it was not going to win for that due to the uh, problematic... Uh, nature of uh, Bradley uh, Cooper's um, facial makeup, shall we say. Um, sound made it perfect sense that the zone of interest beat Oppenheimer for that because uh, basically everything in the zone of interest and everything that's so disturbing about this uh, hugely distressing um, but ph phenomenally masterful um, Auschwitz um, 
film is the sound. So uh, good on them. Um, one prediction I got wrong, I should be uh, hung up for. This was this is a scandal that I did. Best documentary short feature. I picked the ABC's book. Of, uh, the, AB, the ABC's of book banning because I thought it would win. Of course, I showed terrible Atlantic Canadian tendencies in picking that because uh, the 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 winner and rightful winner was uh, none other than, than Ben Proudfoot from Nova Scotia, winning his second Oscar. That's right, a, a lad from Nova Scotia won his second Oscar for the Last Repair Shop. I'm um. A terrible Atlantic Canadian. I don't know how I can call myself the editor of the Maritime Edit magazine. Not, but although I will hasten to add, I mean, my predictions were predictions, not the things I wanted to win. Um, so anyway, massive uh, kudos to Brent Powerfoot of Nova Scotia for winning uh, Best Documentary Short for The Last Repair Show. Uh, a lot of pride. I mean, a, a, as a Brit turned Maritimer, uh, one amazing, but pretty much half of the awards were won by Brits, hence the fact all of the people... Um, mentioning uh, their mothers because it's British Mother's Day. I'd have no idea why North America and Britain has a different Mother's Day. I'm sure there's a very good reason for it. For something to do with Lent. I don't know. Um, so lots of Brits won, which is always, uh, you know, I guess a good, yeah, a bit of a sense of British pride there. But again, as a, as a Canadian and a maritimer to see a Canadian win. So everyone go and watch The Last Repair Shop. It's on Disney Plus, directed by Bren Pou- Proud from Nova Scotia, who won his uh, second Oscar. Um, many of you asked what, I actually wanted to win. I mean, to, I, I maybe said this last week, so apologies if I'm already repeating myself, but my fa- the film I enjoyed most uh, was, other than, uh, you know, Barbie, obviously, very enjoyable, um, but uh, was American Fiction. I just thought American Fiction was absolutely amazing. So, uh, so that was it. So that was, that was the Oscars. Um, uh, but surprises, like I say, uh, John Cena's uh, nude sketch, absolutely brilliant. Uh Shouldn't have worked. See, uh, it, 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 as a concept, you would have thought it sounded a bit childish. But for some reason, uh, him, him and Kimmel uh, pulled it off um, like masters. Uh, but I would say the the one of my favourite bits of the night, has to be said, was was uh, was the very transparently blatant John Mulaney audition for the hosting gig next year. That's right. When John Mulaney came out and launched into uh, what was base, basically an incredible uh honed stand-up routine about field of dreams um it was classic Mulaney. uh it showed how utterly brilliant he would actually be in that hosting gig um i would be fascinated to know the process of him coming up with that bit and again it seems very again it's classic man it's very left field you know he, he's obviously gone to some clubs honed this bit just like his kind of classic bit on uh, back to the future from one of his netflix specials uh but to hone a bit on Phil of Dreams, a movie that I believe 1990, 1989, you know, we are, we're, we're talking over, you know, over well over 30 years ago. Um, and he comes up and does a bit on, on a movie that is dangerous, but, but trusts that the audience at home and in the room will, will go with it. And it was, you know, 90 second, two minute bit. Absolutely brilliant. It was clearly um, him and the uh, the Academy seeing how, Mulaney might fare as a host and I would say um he's got it nailed uh so that was the Oscars uh the other thing I would mention is that uh, Rustin uh is well worth a watch on Netflix um also the film that I thought was would win short film was a film called The After which is horribly disturbing um film but absolutely masterful and also uh right before the Oscars I actually watched uh, American Symphony which was up for best direct uh, best documentary about John Baptiste and um very moving, very magnificent. Uh, so that is the uh, the Oscars. Uh, we will move on to, uh, what else? Uh, March break. I hope you all had a wonderful March break. Um, we uh, we stayed here. We seem to be some of the only people that stayed here. Everyone seems to have, uh, everyone seems to have uh, bottomless pits of cash for luxury holidays at this time of year. Um, good on you. Anyway, <laughs> we, we were here uh, staycationing, did our March break uh, here, and... Um, Made the most of it. Um, uh, Monday last week, we uh, went to Parley Brook uh, to do the Friars Nose Lookout, an incredible uh, hike. Google uh, Parley Brook Trail or Friars Nose Lookout. An amazing thing. Amazingly managed to do that with a a 10-year-old and a 13-year-old. Now, um, granted, there may have been some bribery of offering Fortnite V-Bucks if they continued hiking slash climbing. Um, But uh, So there's a bit of bribery, but it was... um, yeah, they did it, is the point. So, uh, it, job done. Um, I, I had quite a healthy week, I suppose. I went with my wife to a lot of her fitness classes, went to her, her, her boxing class, 
um, on Friday, made it to uh, my friend Nat Hat does an incredible um, uh, spin class, which uh, which I thoroughly enjoyed. So at the end of the week, I was very, very sore all over, um, which is a good way to end March break. Again, another benefit of not going away, you know, Everyone else, you know, you're coming back from some uh, all-inclusive resort. You've been eating too much, drinking too much. No, not me. I'm I'm sore all over from um, from trying to keep up with my wife and her friends, which is a very different thing to do because they uh, they do this stuff all the time. Um, so that was uh, that was March break. Um, uh, one of the things I mentioned obviously on this on this podcast is I want to hear from you. I want you to ask me questions. I want you to tell me. Uh, tell me if you've got any problems that I can help with anything at all. Um, so, and some of you very kindly um, did write to me uh, after last week. I received um, uh, feedback. Uh, John Tatry, uh, the amazing John Tatry, uh, author of the Peace by Chocolate book about the uh, Haddad family, um, an author of multiple, uh, many other books, novels, and uh, nonfiction, uh, CBC journalist for many years, and currently is the uh, editor of Atlantic Books Today, one of the only other uh, Atlantic Canadian magazines in existence and uh, also one of my um, absolute all-time favorites it's been going for many years celebrating uh, atlantic canadian writers um he asked me a question which uh, is a tricky one to answer but uh, he asked it so because i will answer every any question you send to me i will uh, address my friends and by the way you can you can uh, send me messages on social media uh, at james Monager, or you can just uh, email me comedy at james com. john tatry asked uh, how would you punch up the barbie script if they brought it to you looking for more laughs um controversial question because i assume in saying that john is implying there weren't enough laughs in it um i would answer the question like this um i would like most people was so blown away at how good barbie was and is because none of us were kind of expecting it to be so um to john's point which is what i think he's getting at a lot of the stuff that we at the time felt when we watched it was so incredible like america for his uh, speech which is uh, which was incredible but when you do break it down it's not the most um radical or new way to um convey those views um, but yet it felt radical because it was in a Barbie movie. Um, and of course, there was lots of controversy online when the film came out. People saying it was anti-men. Piers Morgan was kicking off saying it was anti-men. Um, and again, I mean, really anyone taking it seriously on either side, it, 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 it's, it's about Barbie. And, and she drives, uh, she drives a, a big plastic car but, but, but it doesn't take, take gas. Or I, or I, sort of, well, I drive a plastic car that doesn't take gas. <laughs> anyway, but my point is, um, so um, I don't know if it necessarily needed... It, it, uh, I feel like the movie, because of its success, its colossal success, and I mean, let's face it, one of the absolute highlights of the Oscars was was Ryan Gosling singing I'm, I'm Just Ken. I mean, what a brilliant moment. You're kind of laughing, you're singing along. Um, uh, Billie Eilish, of course, won. Um, Billie Eilish won her second Oscar, age 22, won her second Oscar. That Billie Eilish, she, she, she does make the rest of us feel like slackers. No matter what you've achieved, Billie Eilish is phenomenal performer i i remember when her, the apple documentary came out about her during covid i'm going to see it at the cinema twice actually she was absolutely blown away by by the, just her talent and her life and her story and i actually had booked tickets to see billy eilish take, i was going to take my kids for their very first concert uh again it got postponed due to covid and bloody bloody blah and it was like three years ago and then they they rescheduled the date for like three years time and i'm like well I've, three years time no and we, so we got a refund and it, for three years' time, felt like yeah, so far away. And then the other day, the ticket, the Ticketmaster tickets, kind of popped up on my screen as a reminder because it was that day. It was a few weeks ago, anyway. Um, but obviously, we'd already refunded them. Uh, so, do do I think? I mean, I I guess where I would have punched up the script is possibly yeah, the scenes in the Mattel offices are um, not not as clever as they possibly could be and uh, a lot of those laughs do come from obviously will ferrell's um mugging um and uh and maybe those scenes could be better but you know what i mean that, that you know i'm answering the question john because you asked it but uh but i feel like it it it, it was already exceeded all of our expectations and i think the only reason anyone might question now aspects of the script or anything else is simply because it has become such a, a, a colossal success, uh, you know, more than a billion dollars at the box office. Um, 
I uh, am a huge fan of Greta Gerwig, the writer director, so much so that interestingly, right before COVID, so in in December twenty nineteen, my we were uh, staying with my parents in England, obviously not knowing that it was going to be the last time we see them for three years, and not knowing what was about to happen and the world was about to end. But I had one wish for that whole trip, and it was that my mum and I would take Hunter, my son, to see Little Women at the cinema, Greta Gerwig's Little Women. Because my mum and I went to see Little Women in 1996, I think it was, when the Winona Ryder version. And it was just one of these beautiful moments. And I believe we went on Mother's Day. And I just remember sitting there with my mum, watching Little Women, a book that we both loved, seeing it depicted fantastically, being in tears. And I wanted to have that experience with my son uh, and and my mum together. And we sat and watched Little Women uh, in a cinema in Yeovil, near where my parents live in Somerset. And then, of course, COVID happened, and it was just a wonderful, wonderful memory. And then, of course, uh, Greta Gerwig goes on to do uh, colossal success with Barbie, and actually went to see Barbie on my um, other son's birthday, um, which I think, anyway. So, so I hope that answers your question, John. How would I punch up the script? I would maybe have uh, um, got some, done some more work on the Will Ferrell scenes. Okay. Um, other... Um, uh, messages I received. Um, I received one from uh, lovely uh, uh, Patricia Stout, uh, who said a great podcast, which is very, very kind. But she uh, very rightly and wisely pointed out that Sussex, New Brunswick needs you to shine a light on the dire situation in our town. She's absolutely right. So that's what I'm going to do. Um, after all the attempts to mitigate flooding here, uh, we've been washed out yet again. People's homes, businesses have suffered huge damage. Lives are endangered with swift currents roaring down our streets, farms, banks. Our whole economy and way of life has been held hostage to these annual floods. After decades of living here, we're exhausted and discouraged. Homes must be rebuilt every year. At this rate, it will become a ghost town. And they need your help and federal help to bring this dangerous situation to light. Uh, do not let our town drown. Wise words, Patricia. Thank you for doing this. This is what this podcast is for. This is what I hope uh, we can do is, is shine a light on these things. Um, it is awful. It is absolutely uh terrible what i've seen happening in sussex one of my favorite places in the world and regardless of whether it's one of my favorite places in the world this would be a terrible thing to happen anywhere but um the people of sussex are so strong and so resilient and they frankly are not getting the support they need this this does have to stop as patricia says um and i believe i have read and heard and again i'm not in politics so um and there's no newspapers anymore so i don't know where i heard this but i'd heard that there was um uh feedback from the government that hey we can't keep helping we can't keep bailing you out or we can't keep helping which is a, an absolutely catastroph catastrophically awful response to this because we are not talking about you know some billionaire moron that's built uh their, their, their 15th luxury mansion you know on the waterfront and then it happens to get flooded we're talking about people that have lived in these houses for decades some of these houses have been there for 100 years um this is not these are actual homes and actual businesses that have been there that are the fabric of the town getting getting um getting flooded uh for reasons that are not not that anyone's to blame when the house is flooded, but the point is, is that, you know, there are situations when you read about some millionaire that's built a house in a place that everyone said that they shouldn't, and it's hanging off a cliff and something happens, blah, 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 blah. Anyway, uh, in this instant, oh, Sussex need help. So please, uh, if anyone has any uh, suggestions, um, uh, anything we can do, anything, anything I can do, uh, because Sussex is genuinely a jewel in this uh, province. It's, it's crown. It's... um was the first place I, one of the first places I ever visited when I came here, uh, fell in love with uh, the people. Of course, uh, I have lots of uh, family um, in Sussex. Uh, one of my dearest uh, friends um, of all time, Lloyd Raven, was, of course, was famously um, from there. Uh, his, his family is still there. Um, and uh, Sussex people are truly the best. They, they, they are resilient. They, um, the the sense of community that they have in that place is unlike almost anywhere else and they've managed to build up this amazing town where they have gorgeous cafes beautiful the sussex ale works beautiful pub there's not many places like this in new brunswick we have a, we have a street like that that you can literally walk to go for a drink go for sushi go to a roadhouse go to a, an arts the the, the um the acts the um arts and culture center um 
uh, there, there, there's a, there's a hockey trading card shop, a, a, a co- which is also a, a coin shop, a collector's shop, music shop. There's so many things. Uh, it's it's a gorgeous town that is um, my favourite place uh, in New Brunswick, and uh, and I think it's a damn shame if uh, these floods are happening every year and the federal government are not helping. Um, as Patricia rightly says, we don't want it to become a ghost town. Um, so, um, and again, I, I hope to do more on this, and I hope I can um, I can uh, help in any way that I can, um, uh, shine a light, or indeed uh, any other way. Um, so that's um, that's. Um, oh, I also have some wonderful feedback um, that's published from uh, a, a man I, I know and love, and I'm sure many of you know and love, uh, Stephen Clark, who is uh, who is of course on Twitter as, um, and you really really should follow him. He is one of the um, Funniest tweeters, writers, uh, he's a public figure. You know what? In, a, in an age where we don't have any media left in New Brunswick, um, and we don't have, you know, we don't have people to. St- Stephen Clark is someone that should be uh, uh, followed, admired. He is on a Twitter as uh, at the F word MB. Um, he also has an incredible um, newsletter, which again, the newsletter doesn't even do it justice. It's a, it's a periodical, it's a journal. It's a digital magazine. It's a newspaper. I mean, I mean, it's 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 one of the only ways that we have. Basically, what he's tried to do is 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 give the people of Fredericton and surrounding areas uh, a definitive guide to the place. He loves the place. He's uh, he's lived there uh, for all but one of forty uh, something years. He grew up exploring the the streets, the town. Uh, loves it, the, the city, um, and. Um, and he has created this uh, this newsletter, which is magazine, it's periodical, that uh, is just the most fantastic read wherever you are in the province. And um, you know what? It always cheers me up. And he he posted something very nice about this uh, podcast on Twitter, which you know cheered me up. And I will say that all of the kind uh, reviews and and messages about this have cheered me up so much. I mean, I know I I always just spout positivity on social media because I um. Well, that, that that's that's my that's my jam. That's what I that's what I do. But um, I'm sure you all know there's a lot of dark days, um, emotionally, uh, internally. There's also you know there's pathetically you know like most people I get I get I get a hell of a lot of knockbacks. Uh, I get a lot of re- rejections. Um, you know, uh, gigs lately have been have been going absolutely fantastic, and then and they've, you've been kindly sending them out. But yeah, behind the scenes, I've been getting a lot of um, rejections, should we say, and there are things that I. I want it to happen, not happening, being told that uh, I'm not right for things. All of these are uh, part and parcel of this business, but it can really get you down and you can start to think that you're, you know, worthless. Uh, and of course, it's all just pathetic. It's all just pathetic ego um, and all the rest of it. But um, anyway, my point is, is that dropping this podcast last week, not having any idea how it was going to be received, knowing that it is literally just me sitting here at a desk surrounded with uh, cushions um r- r- rambling because the name's, <laughs> name's in the title um weekly ramble uh, having uh, receiving one of your you know kind words uh, i've got to tell you it couldn't have come at a better time and um and uh, i was uh, just absolutely over the moon so thank you very much and like i say just just send me questions thoughts ideas um uh, next week uh, uh, yes i'm very excited about this so i was in the um, i went to into the heart and stroke foundation of new brunswick offices this morning uh to record a promo video for a uh event i'm doing with them next week i am hosting their super bingo i know any of you that follow the heart and stroke foundation of new brunswick will know this they are just the most incredible organization uh heart and stroke foundation is of course a, a national uh, organization and every single but every single other province is managed uh by one body they all follow the same rules uh new brunswick um Hunter Foundation new brunswick they uh, all their initiatives and all their amazing fundraising uh the, the, the events that they do like when I, I did the i hosted the show that they did at the monks and casino with uh, mariana's trench and then uh, they had to uh, walk off the earth um and then they do super bingo every week and it's become a huge thing the super bingo and so huge that i'm genuinely nervous about about hosting it next week because it's serious business bingo you can't make a mistake. What if I make a mistake? What if I get a number wrong? My, 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 my house is going to get... On. But this, these are the things going through my head anyway. So I went in this morning uh, to do a promo video. It's a St. Patrick's Day special. 
uh, next week. I'll be live at uh, 7 p.m. Uh, Monday, M March 18th. Um, there's, which, so, so it's just the most amazing. It raises tons of money for the Heart and Stroke Foundation of Canada, um, a, a, a charity that means a, a lot to me. You know, there's lots of people in my family that have um, heart issues. I lost my beloved uh, granny to a uh, heart attack when she was um, very young. Um, and uh, my son, River, I don't know if you might have seen a video during the rounds online where uh, River actually uh, going door to door uh, in our neighborhood collecting money for um, a jump rope for heart, um, raised over $1,000. And he did a little video where they interviewed him about um, why it means so much to him and why uh, why he loves uh, raising money for Heart and Strength Foundation of New Brunswick. Um, so anyway, but the great thing about this this initiative is, of course, it raises a lot of money for Heart and Stroke, but it also, uh, you can win big. There is, there's $20,000 up for grabs on Monday night in 50 balls or less. And a guaranteed five grand in prizes. Uh, cards are just a tenner each. And on sale now. So go to Circle K or Giant Tiger. If you want to check uh, the retailers, it's at, the website is heartandstrokemb.ca slash bingo. Um, and you can win, win, win 20 grand up for grabs. I mean, you can't say fairer than that. Um, so go to the Heart and Stroke Foundation of New Brunswick's uh, Facebook page. Uh, follow them. And uh, what else should we talk about? Uh, I don't know. You tell us, James. Uh, you're, the, uh, you're the host here. Um, it's a wonderful thing. It's, um, like I say, I think I posted something recently. I posted one of my old school reviews where uh, a teacher had, uh, had, had said that I, uh, due to my, uh, incessant, what they call daydreaming, I had my head in the clouds and that, uh, there's, there's one school report that I've been reading out on stage a lot recently where a teacher said that I'm not sure James's brain is working to maximum capacity, uh, which is true. Um, I, uh, I can't follow instructions. Um, as I mentioned, one of my best friends in that hat teaches a spin class uh, that I go to every Friday morning uh, when I'm not on the road, and I actually I, I can't keep up. Like like I love I love the I love the spinning, and uh, but when you know when it gets really fast, when it's like the dip, uh, stand, uh, sit, do that, I, I'm constantly five steps behind because the information just takes longer to get to my brain. Like now when I'm just spewing out words, I have no I, there's no second to sense what I'm saying. I'm just it, it just comes out, but it's like constantly. Five steps behind, dip, stand. So, 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 same thing with church. You know, stand up, sit down. I'm always, what I'm trying to say is, is that throughout my entire life, I am always in the wrong place doing the wrong thing. And that is the one constant, uh, along with the fact that I really, really, really do want to be doing the right thing. But, um, you know, I've, I've embraced that kind of neurodiverse brain. And, uh, you know, now it's a, I, I use, it's a superpower. I mean, it's one of those things, like, like it's one of the reasons I don't take... Um, medication before going on stage because I, I, I think the frenetic uh, madness of my brain flying all over the place is part of what uh, my act is about, you know, and I never forget where I am, like, or, or rather, you know, I might go off on 15 different tangents when I'm doing a routine on stage, but I will always find my way back to the bit. I don't know how my brain still manages to store uh, where we're at. Um, so, so I, and again, I'm, I'm, I've had a, f a few March break. I had the whole week off uh, stand up, uh, so it was lovely to do the the podcast last week, and um, you know, and flex my comedy muscles if that's what this is. Um, but I'm back, uh, back uh, on the road now. Uh, well, tomorrow I am in Oromocto. Saturday actually is my first Saturday this year at Long Bay. Um, I believe there's, there's only something like six tickets left. Um, again, warming up for the uh, Greatest Hits tour. Testing, testing, testing uh, some brand new materials, uh, testing uh, old, possibly in some cases, highly uh, problematic material. <laughs> That's always the interesting thing. I do that. I, d I dust off old jokes that I used to do and ask the audience, uh, is it still okay to do this? Because uh, times have changed. And again, I'm not someone that doesn't want to change with the times. I, I, I want to change. I want to change with the times. But uh some of these things are, some of these things go well and some of these they don't. Um, so, uh, yeah, well, I'm going to leave you now. Um, support Sussex any way you can. Uh, send me, uh, emails, of course, you know, anything at all that we can uh, uh, collaborate on, anything we can uh, shine a light on. Send me uh, your messages and your questions and I will um, talk about them on air. Right, um, I'm off. Uh, happy Wednesday. Uh, enjoy. Uh, your weekend uh and uh hopefully i'll see you well see you either at uh 
Long Bay this Saturday night or uh, I will see you on Monday night uh, for the Heart and Stroke Super Bingo. <laughs> yes. Um, oh, new issue of the Maritime Edit magazine came out today. I've been posting about that on the old socials. Um, uh, again, at this rate, we're one of the only uh, print publications left uh, in existence in, in all of Atlantic Canada. Absolutely dire, t terrible state of affairs uh, right now. Um, but um, new issues out. Um, the cover story is about the uh, opening of the first Les Maisons Simons store, uh, opening at Halifax Shopping Centre, which actually opens next week. Grand opening next Thursday, um, which is um, hosted. The MC, the, the CEO of Simons will be there. And the whole event's going to be hosted by uh, my favourite uh, person to watch do anything, Pamela Mullinger. So uh, that's nice. And uh, she's interviewed uh, Bernard Lebon for the... Um, Issue for the new issue of the mag, so uh, pick it up, um, check it out. If you're a subscriber, it will have come. Um, it would have come to you in the mail already. Uh, tons of great stuff in there. I, I've, I've written a ten page story, but my love of Saint Andrews and why it's uh, why I love Saint Andrews. Um, but I think probably for the next issue, I will write a similar person. We call it a personal journey. It's like it's because it's not a definitive it travel guide. It's my personal travel guide. I think uh, I'm going to write, here we go, his ideas happening on the spot. I am going to do one on Sussex for the next issue so I can write about A, all the amazing businesses and people that I love in Sussex, but also shine a light on the a despicable situation there that is not getting the support that it deserves from government and those uh, in power. So thank you, uh, Patricia Hagen, Patricia Stout, um, for um, highlighting this. That's what this podcast is for. This is your podcast, not mine. I'm just the one sitting here chatting. So um, send me those things. Um, before we go, I feel like every week I want to do uh, an unlikely recommendation, right? An unlikely recommendation where I end by uh, um, plugging something or sharing something or recommending something to all of you that I don't think many of you may have uh, seen or heard of. And I'm going to uh, tell you, for my birthday, my parents always kindly send me like a box of vhs videos which is always just such a treat so it's like yes there was just a joy just opening up all my gifts it was like you know you know multiple cans of beautiful long bay lager um and uh massive pile of vhs and british true crime british gangster dvds and my wife got me a copy of the the, the last gangster a book by charlie richardson uh famously the richardsons who were uh, rivals of the craze for the uninitiated i love true crime not all that weird Horrible, horrible serial killer stuff. I like the, uh, the good old British villains. The old British villains. They they had their all in the right place. I mean, yes, he would put, um, yes, he would nail a hand to the table, but he would always help old ladies across the road. I love all that kind of hypocritical, contradictory bullshit that you get in these, uh, these fantastic villain, villain books and villain documentaries. Love it. Anyway, um, I want to recommend a movie to you. I guess it's somewhat inspired by my week of my one week of fitness last week. Um, and it is a movie that is my favorite movie of all time. And the reason I mentioned the VHS thing is I'm holding the VHS right now. This VHS box, this is the, uh, was one of the very first VHS tapes I ever owned. It still has the price sticker, three pounds. Um, purchased from a basement at a movie collector's fair in Camden, town in North London. Uh, called The Electric Ballroom. The film fair was called Movie Mania. One of the first VHSs I've owned. Um, it is dated 1985. It is one of the... It is the movie that made me want to be a journalist. And you're thinking to yourself, oh, you know, which amazing movie about journalism is this going to be? Is, you know, is all the president's men? No, it's a perfect with John Travolta. That is my recommendation for the week. Uh, if the, This is now becoming a, a, a B, B movie film club. Okay, that's so what we need to do. Everyone to go away and watch Perfect. It stars John Travolta and Jamie Lee Curtis. There is a theme here, because Jamie Lee Curtis was, of course, a, one of the absolute uh, stars of the Oscars, one of the most elegant dresses. Um, I believe she won last year, didn't she? Anyway, Jamie Lee Curtis, a true hero. Uh, she and John Travolta play... It's a story of John Travolta plays a, a Rolling Stone magazine reporter. Ingeniously, uh, the editor is played by the actual editor of Rolling Stone and founder of Rolling Stone magazine. Um, 
he is sent to write a uh, an assignment, a feature on the health club boom and the popular obsession with physical perfection. Um, and it's basically uh, him going in to under, somewhat undercover. Uh, well, no, I guess it's not undercover, but he goes into ascertain whether it's all just about sex and and and, and anyway and starts a, a, a wonderfully uh wonderfully energetic should we say affair with jennifer uh, with jamie lee curtis uh the film was made by james bridges who i think maybe i don't want to say that has he been cancelled i don't know anyway um yeah so jan wenner of rolling stone is in it a perfect great movie i'm um, holding the vhs it's the exact it's the it's the exact tape that my dad bought me in what I think would have been 19, 1989 or 1990. Um, I watched it over and over and over and over again. It just thought being a journalist looked like the most fun thing in the world. Um, it's brilliantly entertaining. Watch the trailer right now. Uh, watch it and send me what you think of it. Um, uh, behind me, I also have the... Not, I'm, not, I'm not saying I'm a complete nerd, but I do have the soundtrack on vinyl and the original UK quad cinema poster also in the vicinity. Uh, so everyone go away and watch Perfect. That's my, that's my, that's, let's, let's call it Mullinger's Weekly Ramble, Weird Recommendation of the Week. Every week I'm going to recommend a weird, uh, random, uh, old book, B-movie, um, album, whatever, uh, that I don't think in, many of you would have seen. It's called Perfect. So John Travolta, Jamie Lee Curtis. Check it out. This has been Mullinger's Weekly Ramble. Send me an email, comedy at jamesmullinger.com. Um, I will be back this time next week. Um, and uh, all that leaves me to say is thank you for listening to me ramble. Um, it is genuinely an honour to be in your car, headphones, ears, however you're listening to this right now. It's really lovely that you are thank you uh shout out to uh, reese and john at podstarter who are the geniuses that somehow take this crap and upload it to all of the places that you're listening to it on spotify apple podcast um and contact reese and john if you would like um to um hear about sponsorship opportunities or anything like that um thank you very much i've been james mullinger this has been mullinger's weekly ramble Mullinger's Weekly Ramble.